Welcome back to the shop, guys. I don't know about you, but I'm really tired of this COVID-19 thing. <laughs> Being quarantined, feel cooped up. It's ridiculous here. Um, we've got over a thousand cases now, growing more than a hundred a day. <laughs> Quite a few hospitalized, but um, so I think it's a part of the machinist community where that we just keep producing videos here for those cooped up some kind of entertainment <laughs> I know I'm watching a lot of stuff and there's not much out there so this is just a simple little quick video me tinkering around trying to make a um, broaching tool for these gears that I've been making so I hope you guys enjoy stay healthy stay quarantined catch you when I can yeah can you see this stuff yeah I guess you can I did a lot more work, research on this gear for the lathe and actually took, um, took the belt off the lathe, put it on here to figure out why it's wearing. And this is the wrong pitch for that belt. It's very sloppy, moves around, which is why it uh, wore out the teeth, one side of the teeth. So. And the only thing I can see is written on the belt is 1.5 by 70 because it's 70 teeth on the belt. Cannot find a specification on that belt to save my life. Um, it's everywhere. Uh, yeah, obviously LMS. And by the way, the little machine shop is closed. You can't put anything in the basket, so they're quarantining and shut down the company. But if you type in that 1.5 by 70, you'll find the belt all over the place. There's a lot of sources for it. Don't know why there's no specification on it or how it became so popular. Even when uses that belt on their wood lathe. So you can buy it from when it's like six, seven bucks every place. But in any case, all right, so the belt does not go with this gear why they're doing this I don't know and I had experimented with some other plastic gears since the Spindex 360 you gotta stay even so I can do like 15 teeth uh, 12 teeth 18 teeth so these were 15s and I'm actually thinking I'm gonna make I got a blank brass one here I'm gonna make a 15 because I don't need the RPM, but this should give me a little bit more torque on the machine for turning threads or whatever. So researching this, it is a metric belt. Again, no specs. Don't know why it's not an industry standard. There are like T2.5s, T5s, T10s. Those are industry standards. There's specs out there on what the pitch is, their metric. And I was curious, like, you find tons and tons of metric belts out there, not really anything imperial. Researched it, and turns out the first timing belt was invented by a guy building a car, some pan head or something like that, whatever it was. So... It was invented by an American. Now, why they're all European, I don't know, no, but whatever. So I was thinking, well, make the, buy an industry standard belt and then make this gear and the upper gear. And that turned out to be a kick because if you uh, caliper this thing, the diameter, and you figure out the pitch, yeah, it's off. If I calipered the belt itself, I come up with uh, 0.176 for a pitch. The gear above it is really big and the belt fits it perfectly. I measured that uh, gear and the pitch is 0.182. So quite a bit of difference. What is that? That's four, five, six, six thou, which does build up if you're going around uh, the gear you know cumulative error you're going to get and i did wind up remaking this guy to match the upper gear and to match the belt so these uh this wasn't made with that this was made with the first ones because i can see it's kind of rounded in the bottom 
this one was made already with the first one and I started cutting this with this one and it was just way too far off so I abandoned it this will go in the scrap drawer um, so I don't know long story short what to say um, the belt I measured without a doubt the pitch is 0.176 the upper gear which the belt matches is 0.182 so I'm not sure what I'm going to do and that again that's real sloppy but I was also thinking you know I need to do this broaching here and I can't remember how I did this one this came out like perfect and I probably use this tool to do it does that fit in there? No, it does. Yeah, it does. So I use this tool. So um, I need to be able to do some broaching. So I was thinking, first thing, let me get a spindle lock somehow. And I came up with an idea that does work. And I'll take you over to the mill and show you how it works. But um, so I'll have that. And then I'm taking, since this flexed, I had pressed it into this thing to keep it from flexing but for these gears I got to go deeper so I've got a quarter inch drill rod in the tool grinder right now and I'm going to make a long one it's round so I'm going to take the two sides down take the face down and that should be stiff enough to do one of these gears and I'll probably try it on this but so that's the end of whatever kind of research I did. So I'll take you over the mill and show you how this thing works. Completely forgot I wanted to share one item here. Get this stuff out of the way, out of the way, out of the way. This guy, Amazon. Wow. This is an eye gauge. I wasn't expecting this kind of quality. I mean, it's just a really nice box. I mean, it's spring loaded to keep it shut I'll turn this over that is incredible quality here um, take it out it's almost like it's heavy it's very heavy I don't want to touch it that's probably glass 10x comes with all the reticles incredible really lights up and I had picked this up because I wanted to measure you know distances and pitches and angles and all that sort of stuff I think this guy ran like 80 bucks. It comes with a bunch of extra batteries. I don't know where they go, but, or if you use them all, some kind of tool to remove the reticle. You just unscrew this and the glass is floating in there. So, um, the quality of these reticles too, I don't know how they do this. I mean, you can go easily down to a quarter millimeter measurement and probably better. Where is it? There it is. Piece of glass just sitting in there. And you just stick it in there. I mean, go and look at it. I'll put a link in the description to it if anybody's interested. But I highly, highly recommend this thing. So I'll probably be using this a lot uh, coming up. Even a nice little pouch in here. This is like, wow, this is great. So I gauge 10X. Well, sorry about the lighting here. <laughs> it's still cloudy and overcast outside. So on the spindle lock, this is the only idea I could come up with over time. If anybody else has a better idea, boy, let me know. Because the problem is everything here turns. You know, there's nothing that I can lock onto. And you can see this is just too much play in here to do any broaching. So what this guy does is, if you've got the belt drive update, the knob comes off, the shelf hits the belt here, and so you can lock it down. When you don't need it, you can loosen, spin it underneath, and now the shelf is underneath this piece of plastic here. And I did test it. Oh, I guess I should leave it on there. <laughs> now I don't have to take it off. I did test it, and it does a pretty good job of locking it up, let me tell you and it just clears the belt when you have it disengaged right now i've got that that ledge thing on the bottom so come on lock it down so it holds this plastic yeah, yeah. There, 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 there all right so perfect 
So that's it, it works, I'm geared for it, and now I just have to finish making the new broaching tool, and then I'll be trying it out. I was thinking too, yeah, I could take all this apart, drill a hole in the pulley and pin the thing, but I don't want to take the tack all apart and try to get it all lined back up again. It's working nice. Touch DRO, it's been working rock solid. I did have a problem where the scales would just lose it. So I had bought a storage scope and started doing some analysis and the microcontroller in it draws a lot of, uh, how do you explain it? I mean, the trans wall pack that I had, the DC supply was had a sawtooth frequency keep on changing so the microcontroller is just creating tremendous surges so I went to a real heavy transformer this is like a 12 volt one and a half amp that reduced it down to about 200 millivolts worth of sawtooth on the back of this guy this goes into a little plastic tray of 3d printed two 2000 microfarad electrolytics are in there and a 0.1 ceramic and that pretty much so got rid of it. it's down to like 40 millivolts now so this guy has been working rock solid i have spent hours and hours and hours using it and have not had a problem yet so i'm thrilled with that so if you guys are going to get into the touch dro and you want to use the wall power rather than burning up batteries that's the way to go Thought I'd just shoot this for a second just to let you guys see the setup. New base, that was the one that I showed making, and boy, there's no play in it. It's beautiful. Um, so, just power it up. I've only got a few thousands more to go, but. And of course, there's junk all over the bench. <laughs> Rotate it 180. And the other side. Makes it really nice, I'll tell you. Yeah, I can see the junk all over. But yeah, I'm liking this base now and everything's all nice and clean. Just thought I'd share that. Kind of done playing with this thing. So I'm just going to quit on this and leave whatever's in my blaze in there. Here's the final piece. This was quarter inch drill rod and I did harden it, but I must have locked out doing this. This has to be the one that did this because that's the only way I could do that. But feeling this edge, boy, this is really sharp compared to this one. I tried going back in and just cutting some relief and it started working better. But I think my mistake was I ran, you can see there's a radius on this. I ran this into the wheel this way rather than swiping it. So it did start cutting aluminum pretty good. But since I put it back in the machine, it, all the angles are crooked now and that's at an angle. But <laughs> So uh, I think I'm only going to do this with high speed steel, even though, you know, hardened it. Because I did run a... Um, file over it and says yeah it's hard so it doesn't touch the edges and I can still grind this thing too easily so well whatever um, so that's kind of it I think reproduce this guy if I ever get some high speed steel uh, rod like this quarter inch because this is nice and stiff but when I was doing this I can tell it's cutting but also the mill is flexing. The column is just tweaking that way. So, um, yeah, that's it. So 